We want to move on to another top story and the fifth edition of the annual Devolution Conference kicks off today in Kakamega County, a conference that will take stock of the achievements of devolution since inception five years ago, with this year's theme being delivering the devolution promise of sustainable, productive, effective and efficient government for results delivery. Participants will also be looking at the issue of the cash crisis, which continues to hamper delivery of services. All right, we now want to just get the insights from the co-chair of the Devolution Conference Steering Committee, Rungu Kanangata, on what to expect during the four-day Devolution Conference, which kicks off today, like I mentioned, in Kakamega. The chair, the co-chair of the Devolution uh, Conference Steering Committee, representing the Senate. And therefore, I do know that, uh, one, we shall now discuss all challenges. Uh, because we are now focused on what we call the big four. That is, the national government currently is, has a five-year plan where it wants to implement certain things. And uh, those things happens to be, number one, food security, health care, uh, uh, things like uh, housing. <clears throat> and finally, we have what we call uh, manufacturing. So essentially, these are... Uh, things which are critical to the country, they are specific, and therefore, currently, we shall not discuss all challenges which are facing our counties. Be that as it may, uh, I would propose that, number one, we discuss uh, disbursements of funds. Number two, we talk of the interlinkages between the state and also what we call devolve units, and also probably also issues concerning corruption. Even if you're talking of the so-called agenda, or agenda big four agenda, that is those four issues that I've highlighted, we also want a situation where we have timely execution of uh, projects, also disbursements of funds. You have a situation where we allocate money to the devolve units, it takes ages, to have that money reach, for instance, Moranga County. Of course, also, I would have loved also we discussed the issues to do with the, the formula. We are aware now Commission for Revenue Allocation is about to change the formula, which underpins how we allocate resources to our devolved units. Uh, we have currently a certain criteria that gives a lot of credence, number one, to population. I think, if I'm not wrong, 46%. Then we have what we call the area. It is usually weighted to about 26%. And then you have what we call equitable share. That is a certain percentage that is constant to all counties. And then you also have to take into account poverty rate. So several factors. When you look at that formula, for instance, personally, where I come from in Moranga, we feel we are somehow oppressed. It's not fair. It somehow disfavors places like Moranga. Number one, Moranga is highly populated. Uh, that population is not given the correct weight. I would propose that we add that weight so that probably it comes to about 60%. Because when you talk about development, you are developing people, not rocks or lands. Number two also, we have a criteria that is called fiscal prudency. When you look at that, uh, to that criteria, it's quite critical. It look, for instance, how a county has been able to collect local resources for that year. And then based on the percentage of its ability to hit the target, it is given an incentive that is called fiscal prudence ratio. Yes, I would propose that we expand that criterion to include other things, including uh, how much a county is appearing in auditor's reports, for instance, the absorption rate level, if you are good in absorbing funds, again, you get more marks. So therefore, that I would also propose, we also increase that uh, fiscal prudence ratio. It gets very little, I think it's the last one in terms of how much one is able to score and get more funds. But we need to give more incentives to governors who are properly managing uh, county resources. And therefore, uh, I don't know whether we can slot a place in Kakamega to discuss that formula. I think it's important because it affects my county because we get about six billion 
vis-à-vis uh, -vis other counties which are getting about 10 billion when they have only about a quarter of the Muranga County uh, population and therefore we feel somehow disfavored by the current formula which underpins how we allocate resources to our regions. And again also uh, we have what we call equalization fund. When you look at equalization fund I would propose that we look at sublocations instead of looking at the counties because even in Moranga for instance there are sublocations with, with a lot of problems which can be deemed as uh, locations qualifying to get uh, what we call uh, beneficial or uh, the preferential treatment. And therefore, when you go to sub-locations, you will find even in slums, let's say Nairobi County. Nairobi County, in various parameters, scores very well. I think it has the lowest incidence of poverty. I think it's about 16%. But we know we have places like Mukuru slums, Kibera slums, we have mother Islam. So therefore, when you go to location, those pockets of poverty will come up and they will be able to benefit from that. So therefore, I would be urging probably we reconsider how we are able to identify uh, regions that have problems. Because I know Moranga County, there are several areas that are going to qualify. All right, so that is Zurungu Kangata commenting really on what the expectations should be as uh, the fifth devolution conference kicks off uh, today in Kakamega. Now, Mandera is one of the counties that have made strides in development since the beginning of devolution five years ago. Governor Ali Robba elaborates some of the achievements made so far. Take a look. Now is virtually every sector is receiving transformative changes starting from healthcare sector. If I take, for example, Mandera County, the healthcare sector was pro possibly the most, the, 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 the worst performing in this country. If you take an example, we inherited 152 health facilities, out of which only 10% were operational at less than 10% capacity. The total healthcare personnel that we uh, inherited was 153, which is not even enough to run Mandera Referral Hospital. Uh, we didn't have any ambulance services at all. We also received the worst uh, maternal mortality rate uh, uh, across the globe, standing at 3,795 uh, 3, deaths per 100,000 live births. What we've embarked on after devolution in the healthcare sector is to start turning around this uh, by addressing all the critical components. Uh, we operationalized the entire 52 health facilities and uh, constructed 63 new health facilities, out of which four are level three hospitals and upgraded two of uh, the major referral hospitals, which is Elwak and Mandera. We also increased our healthcare personnel by about 530 percent, from 152 to 833 skilled healthcare workers. Medical referrals have been improved. Also, we've uh, uh, now we have uh, 14 ambulances operating for free across the seven subcounties in Mandera, uh, and. Uh, we have 18 maternity centers strategically positioned to make sure that women deliver, you know, to in the nearest hospital facility as we are. Uh, we've managed to reduce the maternal health indicators from 3,795 deaths uh, per 100,000 live births to 588, which is still above the national average, but at least uh, more than, uh, you know, 500% uh, improvement in terms of bringing it down, and the journey is on. If you look at agriculture, River Dao was taken over by Madenge plants, and today we have 4,600 hectares of irrigation uh, along River Dao that is producing surplus uh, in terms of uh, certain components like watermelons, onions, uh, lemons and that we are taking to Nairobi and uh, Addis, from uh, which is neighboring in our area, and and this uh, in terms of water security, 
the water sector was uh, extremely bad. Virtually every year before devolution, uh, our counties were characterized by mass death of livestock. And uh, now what we have is five years into devolution, we've not managed to see mass death of livestock as it used to happen because of intervention. And as a governor, I've discovered that a lot of livestock die not because of lack of pasture, but... Say again. All right, so that is Mandara Governor Ali Roba just highlighting some of the strides that uh, Mandara County has made with regard to uh, devolution. And that is also uh, the topic of discussion on Twitter. And we're asking you if you are satisfied with what devolution has achieved in your county. And I have to say that there are quite a number of tweets that have come in. Let me just sample um, a couple of them. All right, so I have... Uh M. Mugambi, you say devolution in itself is sacrosanct, and uh, I believe in it and what it has achieved. Um, also, somebody here, uh, I, it's Roy Kamal, you say home Kambu County is better, investments Kuala County the best, Kajado trying a lot, current in Nairobi County poor. Okay, Kamal and Morris, you say if we get satisfied, then it means we won't seek for more, which we can and are yet to. This is not to say that we have done poorly so far. Keep your comments coming. Um, Evans Omoni, you have a different view. You say, I have seen nothing in devolution. And you say, I'm sorry. Also, Abdin Gurusi, you say, no, tribalism and corruption at its height. Um, and you say, particularly, you feel it's, it's like that in Marsabit County. Uh, thank you for your tweets. Keep them coming. I'll continue to sample them as we uh, go along on the show. For now, though, we take a short commercial break. Don't go away. New 